Well, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to our series on building out your first AI agent, where we are going to be building this custom AI chat assistant for your website. And by the time we're done, you're going to have this fully deployed widget on your website that's going to be connected to a chat bot, a chat agent that will have access to a bunch of stuff that will help you make more sales and grow your business even while you're sleeping. And today we're going to get into the fun stuff in this video, and we're going to actually start building out our agent and giving it some intelligence and giving it some memory. So let's jump in. Now, if you haven't watched the previous videos, please go back and do that so you can kind of get caught up on where we're at. I'm going to leave a link up in the up here, a little card that you can click on that will take you back to the first video, and that way you can kind of get caught up. For everybody else, let's go ahead and jump into it. So in the last video, we got to the point where we had set up our chat trigger node, and we're ready to sort of add our agent and some other components. But before we do that, we need to do one more thing. And if you double click on any node in N8N, it's going to open up a customization panel where we can do some additional things. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to make this chat publicly available. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us a little chat URL that we can then, we could technically send it to someone, we could technically link to it on our website, and it's going to show the chat. Now, if I try and just go ahead and grab this URL now, so if I grab, just copy it and I try and paste it into my browser, what you're going to see is it's going to give you an error. But this is really cool thing about N8N is it kind of tries to help you out. It says the requested webhook is not registered. And then it says, hint, the workflow must be active for a production URL to run successfully. And so if I come back out here, I'll notice that in order for me to, when I'm testing this workflow, I can leave it inactive. But I, if I want it to actually run on my website or I want to actually use it in practice, in production, I need to take it from inactive to active. And when I do that, it's going to give me a little warning message here. You can click this if you don't want to see it again. We'll click got it. And now if I come back and I test that again, you're going to see that I get this pretty ugly looking little web application, but technically if I had some brains, if I had an AI agent attached to it, it would run. And so that's kind of what we're designing. And what we're going to do is we're going to con condense it down and consolidate it into a little application that looks like this. Okay. So now that we're done with that, the very next thing we want to do is add our AI agent. And there are a lot of different types of AI agents that we can put together here. What you need to understand about these different agents is that they are, they're pretty much agents that are already pre-built to do a specific thing. So if you just wanted, for example, to do a text classifier, so you wanted to take different information and sort of route it to different areas, you can use an AI agent to do that. And they've created a special, a special AI node that's specific for doing that. We're just going to grab the very first generic AI agent here. And when we do, again, it's going to give us a little red box. And the reason it has a red box is because it doesn't have a brain. It doesn't have a chat model here. So it's telling us, hey, this isn't going to work yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to double click into this agent. And we're going to do a couple of things. So we have an option here to connect to the chat trigger node. That's what we want. We want this to execute once we type something into the chat. But we also want to add one more thing. And in this, uh, in this options down here, if I click this drop down menu, it says system message. We're going to want to add a system message to this. Now, when we talk about system messages, what are we talking about? This is the information that we're going to tell this agent about what it is and what it has access to and what it's supposed to do. And I've talked about this many times in other videos, but it's important to repeat, especially if you're brand new. AI agents do very well when they have very clear instructions and very specific tasks in order to do. They start to break down when you start giving them too much information or asking them to remember too many things. And although these models are improving every, well, for every single year, we're not at a point yet where you can feed it you know, millions of bits of text and have it remember and be able to associate everything. And so for this application, we're only going to be asking it to do a few things. One is to be able to send emails and the other one is to be able to access a database where it has information so it can answer questions. But I kind of like to build, uh, I kind of like to build my system message as I'm building out my workflow just so that I'm keeping track of everything that we're doing and that I'm going to ask the agent to do. 
And so the first thing that we're going to do is just tell it what it is. And so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to click on expression and I'm just going to say something to the effect of, I don't know, you are, open this up. You are a website support agent with access to specific tools. Okay. That's all we're going to put for right now. And we can use very common language for this. I'll show you a way at the very end of this training, how you can make this even better, but we're going to just speak to it as we would a human being. So you're a website agent with access to specific tools for right now. That's all we're going to do. Now the agent knows what it is. The next thing we need to do is add some chat, uh, chat model here. We need to give it some brains because right now it doesn't have any. So the next thing I'm going to do is just click on this plus icon under chat model. And again, depending on which one you use, you're going to pick one or the other in here. I use open AI. And so I'm going to click on that chat model. Now, once we're inside again, we open it up, we get a little red box that says, Hey, we don't know what we're doing. If we click inside of this, the first thing we need to do is set up some credentials. So we need to talk to whatever AI agent that we're using. In this case, it's ChatGPT. So I'm going to click on the drop down menu. I'm going to click create new credentials. And then it's going to ask me for some information. It's going to ask me for an API key. It's going to ask me for an organization and it's going to ask me for a base URL. And this is where a lot of people get confused about this. The great thing about N8N is that there's documentation for everything. So if you get to any step in the process and you're not really sure what to do, you can just come up here and click open docs and it will walk you through exactly how to set this up. Lucky for you, we're going to do it together. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is go to platform dot open AI dot com. Okay. And once we're in here, you're going to need to set up your account. So I want you to go ahead, just come up here to sign up in the corner and I want you to set up your account and then come back and I'll walk you through the next steps that you need to go through in order to complete the process, get a little bit of money into the account. You're getting as little as $5 is going to be fine for this. And then we'll move forward from there. All right. So once you set up your account, we're going to be taken to a page that probably looks like this. You're probably sent to the documents page. If you're not, you can see up here, we've got an option for dashboard docs or API reference. The first thing we need to do is add a little bit of money. As I said before, you don't need a lot. $5 is plenty. It's going to last you forever. So you want to come first to the gear icon, which is your settings, and then just come down here to billing. And as you can see, I've got about $46 in here. I, it, you, the price of running these agents is very, very low, shockingly low. So just put $5 in there. You're going to be fine. It'll give you some options on how to set that up when you get in here. So go ahead and fund the count with a couple of dollars and then we'll move on. And okay. Now the next thing, now that we've got a little bit of money in there is we're just going to come back to our dashboard up here at the top right hand corner. And then we're going to come over here to API keys and you'll see, I've got several API keys in here already, but for our training, we're just going to create a new key by clicking in the top right hand corner here. We're going to give it a key name. I'm going to just write tutorial. If I spelled it right. And then I'm going to click create key and it's going to give me this key right here. Now here is a rule, hard and fast rule. Never, ever share this key with anybody. I'm going to delete this key. The second that I'm done making this video, so that nobody else can access it. If they get a hold of this key, they can use your account and run up the bill on you. So don't let anybody know what this key is. So I'm just going to click copy and then I'm going to come back over to N8N. And again, we're back in, if I just exit out here, we're back inside our open AI chat and I'm going to open up my credentials again, and I'm just going to paste that API key in there. Okay. Now the organization, organizational ID is optional. So we don't need to worry about that. And the base URL that is, that stays the same. So we don't need to do anything else there. We're just going to click save. Boom. 
and it worked. Everything's set up correctly. And now we can choose from any different kind of model that ChatGPT offers. I know if you're using regular ChatGPT on the internet right now, you can only use the ChatGPT 5. Well, we can use all of the models in here, which is great for us because if we don't need the AI to be super fast or super smart, or we need it to do something very specific, we can give it a model that specializes in that. And 4.1 mini is a great place to start. So if you don't really know what you need, go with 4.1 one mini it's not too expensive and um, the results are usually pretty good okay so now what do we got now we got our chat trigger we got our ai agent and we've got our brains attached to it so what can we do with this well now as i said before if we open up our chat down here at the bottom we can now talk to it say hey how's it going and we're going to see it says hey how you doing i'm great how can i assist you today okay now the tough thing about this or what we've got now is it doesn't have any memory, so it can't remember anything that we ask it. So if you if you tell it something like my name is Jason, it's going to respond. It's going to say, hey, how can I assist you today? If I ask it, what's my name? It's going to say something to the effect of I don't know what your name is. I don't have access to your personal information, right? Because we haven't given it any memory. And without memory, it can't hold conversations in its brain. So the next thing we want to do is just add a little memory in here by clicking on the plus icon under memory. And I'll zoom in here so you can kind of see that. And there are a bunch of different types of memory that we, that we can use here. We're going to keep it very simple. And we're just going to use the simple memory that N8N has for us. And we are connected to the chat trigger node, right? So we can see over here on the left, this is probably a good idea. This is the session ID. So this is the idea of the conversation that we're having. This is the action, which was send message. And the chat input is what's my name. So that's the question that I just asked the agent. And what we're going to do is this is the context window. So this is as many conversation, how many back and forths does this chat agent remember? And usually like 10 or 15 is fine because we're building an agent for our website. And this may be a rather long conversation of back and forth with people who are there. I'm just going to make this 20. And I think it'd be rare for there to be more than 20 back and forth conversations. And if you find that, hey, it's not enough, then just bump it up to 30 or whatever you need. Okay. Now we have our chat memory. We got our chat model. We're going to click save up here at the top just to make sure that we're keeping everything. And then this is giving us a little arrow here because the because of the changes, the workflow output data may change when this node is it runs again. So it's just giving us a warning here and saying, hey, you made some changes to this and that might affect the output that you get, which we know it's going to because that was the intention. So now if we come back and we say, hey, my name is Jason. It's going to remember, say, how can I assist you today? Let's say, what's my name? And it should remember it. Your name is Jason. How can I help you further? So there you go. So now we have the basics set up. We essentially now have what would what you would normally have with any like web based chat GPT AI bot. Right. We can ask it questions. It has access to all of the information that ChatGPT does. It has access to all of that large language model at contextual information. What we're going to do now as we move forward in the training is we're going to add in some additional tools. They're going to give it specific information about our company and what it was going to need to know in order to answer questions for us. OK, so that'll be in the next train, the next series of the training. And if it's already out, you're going to see a link, a video pop up right here where you can just click on it and move forward. If not, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Click that like, subscribe and bell icon so that you get notified when I release the next video in the series. And I'll talk to you real soon.